Hey, Johnny Ian here. So I just wanted to run through um, this density query to produce some kind of heat map that you were you were asking about. So yeah, I've been thinking about it and um, trying to figure out the best way to do this based on your your sort of your 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 variables here. So if we've got um, our constraint being the distance but that people can walk. Um, between each borehole, then um, yeah, we're gonna basically. I'm gonna run. I'm gonna run with that. <clears throat> Excuse me. And and create some kind of grid that I can then attach the density to. Okay, so 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 that's all fine. Just trying to figure out a way to do this, and 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 that's uh, that's what I've been thinking about. So I'm creating this video. Hopefully, it's not too long, just so you can get an idea of where I'm thinking and uh and then and then if you agree with me or not okay so i was, I was thinking to, in order to 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 create some kind of density um layer i need an area that represents that service area of um minimum just walking distance of 1.5 kilometers um with the households inside that so it's i'm going to use it i mean imagine it's it's a green field that there's nothing going on um and and we just blanket the whole of burundi with some kind of grid um that reflects that area so i'm going to start off with this hexagonal grid here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to my thinking is i use this hexagonal grid and then i attach the um that well i count the number of poly points inside each of these areas but let's just first discuss how i came up with this specific shape and area so if you imagine you've got your um your boreholes with their, I mean, minimum spacing. Okay, now this is in a perfect world <laughs> um, where the um, the resource potential was uniform and you could drill anywhere. Um, this might be the best kind of uh, spacing of your boreholes. Um, so I'm just going to assume that for a start. So, so it's basically that 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 little that circle is a a 1.5 kilometer buffer on the imagined borehole which is your centroid so i mean there, there are kind of gaps um these should possibly overlap to make sure that no one's left out so that's where you must maybe come in and let me know if if you, you you agree with this shape or if i need to make the actual hexagonal shape slightly smaller so that it includes these areas but it, it will definitely give you an idea of of where the the need is so if we just quickly have a look at this um Okay, so there's our there's our borehole, and the distance between boreholes is about three kilometers. Okay, so the distance between each kilometer using this shape is three kilometers. Okay, and then the distance to the edge of the yeah service area is one and a half. Okay, it's just in the instance where these these things don't overlap that um, people have to walk a little bit further. Okay, so the idea then is that I attach the household data to this density service area. And that should be quite easy. I've got um, the households added to this project. And this is for the whole of Burundi. I've just zoom in, zoomed into a specific area here. And then inside this density service area grid, I've got a column for the number of households. And all I do is I just run a count. Uh, count the points in a polygon. That field, modify that. Take too long. It's quite a simple query. Okay, so that's finished. I can close that. And if I open up my attribute table, I should have values now in each of those records. Save that. Perfect. Okay, so now um, for each of these areas, there will be a value of the number of households in each of those areas. Okay, so quite a simple query. Now I just want to color it up based on your, your categories here so that you've got a, some kind of heat map. So that's what I'll do next.
Okay, so um Whoa. So that's our heat map there. Okay, so maybe we can adjust these colors slightly. Um what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna invert that color ramp there and make these ones slightly different. We can see uh, it's sort of a bigger contrast as to what's actually going on. Looks for you. Red. Maybe make this one a pink. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to yeah send you this video, but then also um, wait for your email just to let for for you or you can get hold of me and just let me know what you think if um if this method is going to help so basically looking at this these dark blue areas are the high priority areas based on those um categories that you had sent through to me and yeah the, the 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 red ones are low priority just purely based on household density or that shape that we um that we created okay so that kind of takes care of the the household density uh, side of things but if you're also looking to to maybe try and figure out uh, where your potential yield is, we can then take the resource potential layer and um, and try and do something with that. Um, so if you if you knew uh, where you had a lot of people living, and then you had areas that had uh, a great uh, yield potential, then you could isolate those out and then um, yeah. Um, narrow down the areas to go and drill even better. So we can do something like that. Uh, I have done something like this similar for, for John before. So if, if we just look at, uh, let's turn this off. This is the resource potential layer. And maybe if I just turn, I'm gonna duplicate this layer quickly. Where is that option? There it is there. Okay, let's turn that one off. Let's just make this one single symbol and transparent oops so so then what what I did with John in previous occasions is is I I isolated or for each of these cells you can determine the percentage of the resource potential and then so for instance for this one you can have an average potential yield uh being something based on on the area covered and so then that one would maybe come out a low yield this one a slightly higher yield because the average resource potential is slightly better um so i mean we'd have to figure out uh, a, a way to do that so so if you if you did want to try and do that at a later stage or as part of the query uh, we can do that if it's not really part of of the um, query that you're looking at right now then you can just work with um, with what we've got so far so so I guess the thing uh, for you to just let me know is is whether this is going to work for you or if you want to try and um, figure out a different way uh, to do it okay so yeah let me know cheers